We're going to start it off with council candidates presenting their platform. Each council candidate will have three minutes to speak. Um, at Good evening, everyone. I have been a councillor for 11 years and have been witness a lot of changes in the town of Penhold. The biggest change is the residential growth that we have experienced in the last 12 years. In June of 2010, we opened our multiplex, which has been a great draw and a big change for our community. Due to the hard work by council and administration, working on having the infrastructure in place, we were awarded the regional high school that we look forward to opening in 2014 of se September of 2014. For many years, residents have been asking for a recreation center in high school, and I am so happy we've been able to see these things become a reality in Penhold. I would like to continue the work to sustain the high quality of activities and programs that we have in Penhold. Programs and activities that benefit all our citizens. I'd also like to see organized sports teams established in our community. Sports teams bring a community together with families getting to know one another by volunteering for whichever sport their children is in. As our community grows, I also think we need to plan for green spaces. When developers come to council with their plans for development, there are always questions about roads, sewer and water, which are all important. My questions are, where are the green spaces the parks and the paths and what kind of lighting will there be. To me, this is what connects a community and makes a town where residents can get out with their families and enjoy life. I also think we need to make solid plans for seniors to age in place. We must work with community service providers and developers to achieve medical and social support as well as appropriate housing and transportation for the elderly. Water is another concern for me. At present, we have two wells, and when we move across Highway 42, we will need another. The water pump house mechanical system needs to be replaced. This is an expensive project, but one that must be done. The town is currently looking for funding to help with this project, and I would like to help see this through. Just about everyone wants commercial and industry in our community, so that the tax burden will be reduced from the resident. Now that the grocery store and medical center are starting to build, I believe that other businesses will follow. However, I think it needs to continue to be a major priority for our municipality. In building for the future, there are many things that need to be thought about and planned for. I am prepared to deal with any challenges that may arise and have always been passionate about community. Because I care so much about the things we have, the things we need, and the future of Penhold. On October 21st, I ask that you vote Kathy Sitter. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. The reason uh, I decided to run for council uh, was to bring a lot of fresh ideas to council chambers. Uh, I've lived in Penhold for about seven years now, and I've seen Penhold grow, but I would like to see more growth. I would like to see more businesses. Um, I'd like to see more uh, safety things coming from our, our uh, Penhold peace officers. Uh, more presence from the peace officers as well as the police uh, in this well RCMP. Other things that I've uh, got on my, uh, that, I, that I would like to work towards for the town of Penhold if I'm elected would be um, transit buses. Uh, there are a lot of people I've spoken to, uh, specifically the elderly and people with uh, disabilities, that are shut in in the winter and can't get around. I would like to uh, negotiate with the county of Red Deer and the city of Red Deer in order to make that happen. Um, other things that I would like to uh, assist with would be um, Expanding, um, sorry, just lost my train of thought here. Um, sorry, I'd be working with, uh, being a voice for the people and working along with the residents, having an open door, uh, open email address, phone number, whichever, so the residents can contact me um, and ask questions that I can bring forward to council 
to work with the people. Thank you. My name is Ross Simita. There you go. I'm seeking election as a councillor. I've been in this area since 1952, and I have first-hand knowledge of the flooding of the Pedro Flats in 62 and 63, and the loss of tradesmen in 71, 72, 73 to the Black Falls and Southern Lake Industrial Parks. I'm aware of the arbitrary bad faith practices by the town council in the mid-90s concerning this 600 trailer park fiasco. I personally have been subjected to abusive process and questionable town tactics concerning Boundary Road on the south in between 2002 and 2006. And this area, from Niobe north to the Red Deer River, is high water table. Penhold itself, one mile south to two and a half miles north, every 200 yards is a seat line running west to east. There are various sinkholes, but nobody talks about them. The consequences of this is that there's a class action lawsuit with other basements, maybe a loss of mortgage availability, and it would certainly be rated as a wet zone, which the provincial government is now proposing, is now proposing that it's going to rate all towns. For the future, I would like to see this town council present a good faith openness, full disclosure, same for the quality of housing being offered, rather than the practice of omission. Omission, they don't say anything. They deny C plans. Multiplex could be costing us between 40 to 50 dollars per month per household. I would like to work towards a monthly report showing dollars in, dollars out for the eight common high use activities and hourly utilization of the entire project. Accomplished by utilization of the Pimple Reporter. It's an established publication, has a good mix, and we should maximize the utility rather than maybe abandoning, somebody said. I support busing. I would offer this place as a trial voting van, which has tried and more successful elsewhere, and work towards a guaranteed indemnification to all those suffering from wet basements from contractors who ignore water seat plans. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Uh, my name is George Grant and I am uh, seeking election as a town councillor. I've been living in uh, Penhold uh, since 1996 and uh, this is my home. This is where uh, we're raising our family, uh, where our kids play, and we want this uh, town to continue to prosper. Um, we need to have better communication within the town. Uh, a lot of uh, information that we're reading in the newspaper is not positive information about the town and that needs to change. Um, and I want to be that change. I'm an individual who, uh, I do a lot of community uh, volunteering, not necessarily in this community itself. Uh, I work in Olds. Uh, I do a, a lot of coaching. Uh, and I know what it's like to be a part of a team in order to get things accomplished. I deal with this uh, day in and day out uh, through my job and through the coaching that I do. And I want to work with a group of individuals here in this town to better this town. I want to see uh, 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 commercial and industrial grow. I want to see the streets that we already have. I want the older sections of town, I want them to be maintained and not ignored for the sake of the new areas of town. The new areas are important, but so are the old ones. We need to make certain that uh, we're spending our money properly. We're not wasting money on items that are uh, affecting one or two people within this community. We need to look at what's best for everybody in this community. And I'm hoping that uh, you will trust me in helping deliver that to this community because, uh, I, again, I want to see this uh, community continue to prosper and grow and become stronger um, in the future years. Thank you. 
Good evening and thank you. Um, I've lived in Penwood for oh, 18 plus years. We love living here. It's a great community, the friendliness of the people. And we just want to see Penwood continue to grow, continue to strive, and become the place that everybody wants to live. We want to see commercial um, industrial growth to help offset taxes. And, and I think, you know, like a lot of the other people have said too, is, is the growth of Penwood is important and safety for everyone, for our kids. Um, you know, in and around the school zones of crosswalks, a lot of the kids have to cross the sidewalk or the, the highway to get to the school. And we want to make sure they can do it safe. So, thank you, and, and hopefully we'll see you soon. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming out. Um, I think this sends a message to, to everybody sitting up here with, with the support that we're seeing out there right now, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I recently just moved here, just last May, so about 18 months ago, um, and it's kind of a full circle for, for my wife and I. Uh, six years ago, we moved from Athabasca down to Red here, and my first teaching job in Central Alberta was at the Penwood School. And uh, I taught there for one year, and unfortunately, I lost my position, and I was transferred to Innisville Middle. So when I came in to have dinner tonight, it was, it was a good opportunity for me to reminisce, because I remember coming over to the old town hall, picking up the key to come in here so that the kids could come take their cooking class here, and I was teaching them their cooking class. And that's before they renovated the Penwood School. So we've come full circle because I've had, I have two young children now, and I decided that I wanted my wife to stay home. I wanted her to be a stay-at-home mom, so we moved to Penwood because I remember what a great little community it was when they taught here. Um, so I'd like, these are the things I'd like to see. And these, these are not my ideas, these are based on conversations with people that I've talked to at their doors or at the Syntax or at the FastCast or wherever. And the first one is this town needs to become better at communicating with its people. If you look back the last 12 months, 18 months, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what's going on. And I can help in this area because one of my new tasks as a teacher is I am the local communications officer for the ATA group for Chinook's Edge. So my job is to communicate all ATA information to the teaching population of Chinook's Edge, which is about 600 teachers. So I have some strategies that I think we could put into place. As others have said, we need some more economic and commercial growth. We need people to spend their money in this town rather than driving to Red Deer or to Innisfil to spend their money. We need to have some jobs in this town for people like you or maybe your, your teenagers. Let's, let's get some jobs in this town and keep some money here. And you know the big benefit to this is hopefully it offsets some of the, the tax issues that we've had the last little while. I'd like to encourage council to have an infrastructure review. Similar to what one of the previous candidates said, the older neighborhoods need to have streets and sidewalks maintained and back alleys that are not flooding. And finally, we need to focus on family first. I represent the new demographic of this town, young families moving in. We need to have all kinds of events, sports teams, 4-H, Cubs, Scouts, whatever it is to keep people in this town. On October 21st, I ask you to vote Mike Walsh. Thank you, Arjo, and I'm running to be a Penhold Town Councillor. I'm married to my wife, Erin Arjo, and together we have two children, Nikki and Ryan, who both attend Penhold School. Why am I running? Like many of you, I want to see more community involvement, efficient spending of our tax dollars, and increased citizen engagement. I love this town. I have lived here my whole life, and I have watched it grow from less than 1,000 people to 2,500. With that growth, we have lost some things. I grew up playing soccer in Penhold on a Penhold soccer team. I played baseball in Penhold on a Penhold baseball team. My parents played slow pitch on a Penhold slow pitch team in a Penhold slow pitch league. Penhold has doubled in population since that time, yet now has very little in the way of community activities. Penhold needs to find its community. One of the best lines I have heard while door knocking, Penhold needs to move away from being a bedroom community and become a community. 
I believe it is the responsibility of everyone who lives here to work to make this place a better place to live. This is an attitude that has to start with town council and reach out to all citizens. We need to actively recruit and embrace volunteers, encourage and support community activities in any way we can. We need to work on keeping our children in the community instead of pushing them out to Red Deer and Innisfail as soon as school ends. If elected, community involvement will be one of my priorities. Being a small business owner, I know how important it is to make every dollar count. The council needs to work with and direct our administration to prioritize projects and spending. As councillor, it will be my priority to ensure taxpayer dollars are being used efficiently and effectively. As a team, council and administration need to work together to attract new business. Commercial industrial land west of the railroad tracks needs to be developed. But while we work to attract more business, it is important that we do not forget the businesses we have. While talking to local business owners, one common factor is they feel they are not being supported by the town. As councillor, I pledge to work with and support all our businesses. There are 11 men and women wanting a seat as town councillor. Why should you vote for me? I can be a strong, positive voice for you and for Penhold. I am a good listener, a good communicator, and I have learned through running a business how important it is to be a good negotiator, be flexible, and to be able to manage conflict. This isn't a job to me. This is an important contribution that I can make and a meaningful way to give back to my community. Together, we can work to make Penhold a place we are proud to call home. I'm asking for your support. On October 21st, vote for me, Mike Yarjo. Thank you. Yes, folks, just when I thought it was safe to go into politics, I turn up like a bad penny. I'm just here to uh, fill in for Julia tonight, uh, and certainly please join me in extending best wishes to her for a speedy recovery. Um, good evening, fellow candidates, mayoral candidates, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to read this as if I'm Julie because she wrote this speech. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you this evening. My family and I moved to Penhold in 1979. We were provided with a great opportunity to build our own home through an Alberta home program. This initiative helped Penhold's progress in moving toward its town status. From our early years of living in Penhold, we knew that we had made the right choice. We've been very fortunate to live in this safe and vibrant community. I have 18 years experience with municipal government, starting in 1992. I was honored to hold two terms, six years as councillor, and four terms, 12 years, as mayor. All of these terms, of course, were representing the people of this growing community, and I was extremely proud to do so. In these years, I've learned a great deal about the town's infrastructure, social programs, and the many opportunities that Penhold has to market and showcase our community within Alberta. I've worked with many great volunteers in helping to keep the dream of building a better community alive. I've worked on seniors programs, and if elected, I will see that the seniors are not neglected. I love working and talking with people of all ages, and I realize how important it is to grow a community. It's teamwork that's important, not personal agendas. I'm a strong leader and I have experience being the chairperson for the Central Alberta Economic Partnership and the Central Alberta Regional Waste Authority. I've also served on the board of directors for the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association. I hold great respect for all the volunteers on the various committees in Penhold and I will work beside them to build this community. If elected to council, I will continue to work diligently and effectively with all council to maintain and enhance various social programs for seniors and various age groups. I will work with council to establish a stronger relationship between the citizens of Penhold and town council. I'll continue to listen, learn, and work together to build an even stronger community. I will work diligently with our business leaders and entrepreneurs to bring enhancement and new ideas to Penhold. In finishing things up, I would be honored to serve the next four years as one of your town councillors. Thank you all for attending this forum. Best wishes to all of the candidates, and please vote for Julia King on October 21st. Hi, it's nice to see a good turnout tonight. Uh, I'm Roger Viola, I'm a 30 year resident of Penhold. And one thing I think I can bring to, to town council is a 
sense of teamwork, something we just desperately need in this, on this council. Uh, you know, if I go through my history, you know, I've been a member of the Red Deer Elks for 38 or 39 years, I believe, this year. And we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years for everything from new sports to senior living, not only in Red Deer, but all of us in Alberta. You know, we, how do we achieve that teamwork? Discussion, compromise, and decisions have to be made. You know, I went to the, uh, the council meeting here in August. People were interested in for council. And there's a couple of questions there that were asked, the councils were asked. You know, what were the difficulties in being on council? One councilor said, well, we, we have decisions coming, uh, issues coming up time and time again that don't get solved. Well, and then one councillor said it's like beating your head against the wall. Well, you can't have that. You, you, the council has to work cohesively. And one thing I think I can bring to council is, is, is a, a sense of teamwork, getting things accomplished. And, uh, you know, we have a current mayor now and, and two experienced councillors running for mayor. And, you know, in a lot of ways that's not a good thing. We're going to lose two experienced people. There's no, there's no substitute for experience, but you know, we need new blood on council. We need new enthusiasm. We need new ideas. And, uh, you know, like I said before, you know, I've lived the panel for 30 years. In the last couple of years, I'm pretty disappointed, you know, with the constant nitpicking, negative publicity we've been receiving. We, you know, we just, we're better than that. We, we, sh we shouldn't be like that. We, we just have to move on from, from those things. We can't have that. You know, we're going through a growing period. Yes, we have a lot of young people going, coming into town, and we can't forget that, you know, Pendle's over 100 years old. We need a, a, a council that reflects that maturity now. You know, the people of, of Pendle deserve that, and the people from the past who helped build this town deserve that. So, um, you, know, I, uh, you know, I think it's a very important election for us, really. It's a, it's a turning point in the panel. We really need now to have a, a very good voter turnout on Monday. And I have a funny feeling we are going to have a very good turnout, which is a good thing because the more people that vote, the better council you're going to have. So get out on the 21st and vote. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen fellow candidates, and thank you to uh, Al Gamble for being our moderator for this evening. My name is Gary Yarjo, and I stand before you asking for your support on October 21st. I have lived in Penrose since 1975, and at that time the population was 750 residents, with one store and only one school. Housing on the east side of 2A was just starting. Back then everybody knew everybody. We had Boy Scouts, Junior Forest Wardens, Girl Guides, and a skating club. I loved those days raising my family of two boys and two girls, of which two are still living in Penhold today raising their own families. This town has been a very good place to live and raise a family. My wish is that many more families now and in the future are able to have the same opportunity. I was fortunate to have the chance to give back a little during my tenure as councillor from 1995 until 2010. We had a very good working team where everyone had a say, and whether your idea was accepted or not, we just hunkered down as a team to work towards making Penhold a better place to call home. I have not been very proud lately. With all the negativity and fighting in town, it seems to me that there was no team running our town. It seems to me that we had three teams, all going in three different directions. This election is coming none too early. This is our chance to get back on track. I would like to see a transit system in town that would enable our youth and elderly a chance to get a part-time job or perhaps a doctor's appointment. I also think it's very important that we get the word out there that Penhold is open for business. By attracting commercial and industrial businesses, we can take the tax burden off of our residential properties. We have a great group of candidates here to choose from. All seem to be as passionate about Penhold as I am. I have always been involved in team sports and understand what it takes to be a champion. 
If you elect me to serve you for the next four years, I will work hard with council and administration to ensure that Penhold once again is a champion. Please come out and vote on October 21st and put your X next to Gary Yarshall. Thank you all for coming out tonight because you care. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. As you've heard, my name is Sherilyn Sanchez. I've lived in Penhold for almost six years now with my husband, Rafael, and my son, Nick. I worked for many years in child care and in, with children's programs, as well as bookkeeping and administration. I'm a big believer in community, and I consider myself a champion for children and families. I believe we can build a stronger community through encouraging communication. The Municipal Inspection Report very clinically pointed out the need for communication to be put high on the priority list. If you elect me, I commit to working hard to ensure that clear and comprehensive communication is at the forefront of the decision-making process. I want to help build our community by supporting the positive progress that is already happening in this town. We have a wonderful, responsible library that engages the community and a lot of non-residents come and visit regularly. We have good quality schools that attract young families to move here. We have many very active and thriving programs and organizations. We have amazing volunteers. I just can't say enough about how thankful I am for all the hard work they do. We need more people to step up and work shoulder to shoulder. Life is good here, but together we can all make it all better. I want to help build the infrastructure of this community with a broad, diverse spectrum of commerce, residential options, and services. Our smallness is attractive for many reasons, including the safety and the sense of community connectedness Penhold offers. Preserving this while attracting new businesses and more commercial development is a balancing act. The community will be enhanced by the commercial businesses currently under construction. And that's a good start. We need more commercial and industrial businesses, but the need for careful, thoughtful, and communicated long-term planning is paramount. Mostly, I want to build the community in this community. We all want a community where we feel safe and secure and supported. Our community is diverse and I enjoy that diversity. I believe that the council you elect should model respectfulness and responsibility. Problem solving, creativity, inclusivity, empathy, understanding, willingness to compromise, and good negotiation skills are necessary for the council you elect to get the job done. Not everyone is good at all these things, but that is why team works. The council you elect needs to work as a team, the community we, need to, we live in needs to be a part of the larger team. Working together is the only way we can tackle the issues we face and build a better community for our children and grandchildren. Time. <laughs> Good evening everyone and thank you all for coming out tonight. My name is Chad Hoff and I'm here to gain your support on October 21st. It's great to see everyone here between your candidates and hear what they have to say. With all the election, with all the attention this election is getting, and the good number of candidates we have running, it shows us there's a renewed interest in democracy in Panama. Look at this fine lineup we have here tonight. 14 active and energetic community members stepping up to be our representatives and leaders. Let's thank them all for their dedication and commitment to our community. We've got to hear about some of the current issues in Panama right now. Economic development, the multiplex, water taxes, and the list goes on. I've got some great ideas to tackle all those challenges, and with a fresh new team, we will have seven different viewpoints focused in the same direction. By collecting our broad range of experience, Council will become a problem-solving machine ready to take on any obstacle. I'm here tonight to gain your confidence that I'm the best candidate to be your mayor. The people that have asked me to step up to this job know me have solid values and that I want the best things for our community. After growing up in small town Alberta, I spent 10 years running around working in the oil patch before I was ready to settle down and start my family. I wanted to live in a small town because I love the sense of community, the relaxed atmosphere, the safety of being close with all your neighbors. 
We chose Panama because it's the perfect place to raise our family and run my business. With the unlimited potential in this area, I'm confident we can do anything we want to. We've done it once already with the multiplex here. The mayor needs to be the strongest community connection and Pennell's best salesman. I'm committed to doing this job right, being available to everyone at all times. And I will ensure that your representatives are at community events and meetings, the library programs, the schools, and everywhere they are needed. By doing so, we can have a first-hand view of the entire community represented at the council table. With the enormous growth the panel has experienced over the last 10 or so years, there have been some growing pains. We need to build a strong community to support a bigger town. We need to ensure that community groups and volunteers have all the support they need. They are our lifeblood. Our commercial base needs to be developed to provide services and jobs to the people who live here. The town must plan, for, plan our infrastructure to handle our growth. When the new families move to town to get settled in, there needs to be activities and programs that everyone can be a part of. There's no way we can be a truly connected community if everybody is leaving town to get their needs filled. Uh, the town has just completed a community needs assessment, which council will use to make sure we are meeting the needs of the people while spending their tax dollars responsibly. Before our new council makes our strategic plan, I want to host a town hall meeting, an open house brainstorming session to give every person an opportunity to be heard. In order to accurately set direction for our town, the council needs to understand your wants, needs, and dreams. Over my past term as councillor, I've gained, gained, I've gained a great deal of knowledge and experience as to the inner workings of the town. From budgeting and bylaw creation to economic development and strategic planning, I have a much clearer picture of what is needed to operate a municipality. With our involvement in the AUMA, I've made numerous government contacts, and they have a wide range of resources available to us. I will be taking advantage of their elected official education program to build on my knowledge of municipal government. Together with this new council, we will look into the future to see where we want to be and develop the best plan to get there. The new town council working with our residents will make sure panel is the best little town in Alberta. Thank you. On October 21st, vote for John Hoffman. Thank you, everyone, and thank you all for coming out tonight. And no matter what the election results are, thank you to all the candidates for rising up to the challenge and caring enough about Penhold to go under the community microscope. I personally love this town. We are about 90 minutes from two huge metropolises, 10 minutes from Red Deer, we have nature trails out west, housing for all sizes of families, we know our neighbours and we watch out for each other on a daily basis. We really do have a lot to be grateful for. So what do I believe in? First and foremost, I believe in family. As we grow, we need to ensure there are plenty of trails, parks, recreation, housing, jobs, schools and daily services available to keep our families engaged and active. Communication. The message to being delivered from anyone interacting with people must be consistent, positive, and show that we are open for business, open for engagement, and willing to solve any issue. We've got to adopt the customer's always right attitude. We need to develop a complete strategy that will help us identify how we're going to communicate, where and when, and we have to ask ourselves what tools and enforceable methods will we establish to ensure that these tools are being used. Economic development. We need to brand this town. So people see a certain logo or hear a specific buzz phrase or catch comment, they think of Penhold in a positive manner. We need to market this community. Building a community. We need closer collaboration with you, the public. We need to work on the best formats that will engage the most people. We need to continue reviewing our policies and bylaws to ensure they are reflective of today's environment. We need to build strong programs for families of all ages. And we need leaders who have the best interests of the community at heart and who take business approach to leadership, where common sense and wise decisions will trump the politics, the individual business promoting and personal agendas. We need to level that playing field and we need to be, build teamwork at all levels. So, who am I to undertake this huge task? I'm a young secretary working for a base commander who had to make a tough decision once in giving a time-sensitive message to be delivered to Prime Minister Trudeau. It's an all-male military stand easy with other officers. I either deliver the message and I'm fired, or I don't deliver the message and I'm fired. I was fired halfway through into that stand easy. I was later promoted. 
I'm also a young mother who lived in Evergreen Mill, the home park in Edmonton that was destroyed by the F4 tornado. I became one of the founders and vice chairperson of the Tornadoes Victim Committee. We helped victims work through government and, and insurance bureaucracy and helped shape emergency response plans for Edmonton, the province, and the country. I'm a strong businesswoman who's the first in her company to develop a comprehensive food safety program complete with policies, procedures, operational product standards. I'm also a certified internal auditor to audit the, the aforementioned. I, along with the company's new owners, have taken the company from a losing margin to an operational profit standpoint in one year. I'm an experienced counselor who's been instrumental to removing our landlocked barriers in the past, bringing E911 to all rural, rural areas. I'm one council, I'm one council sends into work with struggling groups to set up the new structures and formats. I've been chair and vice chair of many groups, both large and small. I was involved in community, community collaboration from concept to design of our district area multiplex. And I'm currently the vice chairperson of the Parkland Foundation, which in collaboration and partnership with other communities and Bethany Care, is working on a multi-million dollar complex to replace the Autumn Glen Lodge in Innisfail. I'm a 15-year-old volunteer who sat on the Jesse Duncan and Penfold Schools Parent Advisory Committee and, and in the process raised significant funds. So while I can stand up here and claim all the successes I want in the past, present, and future, it all would not have happened without a team of people working with me. Countless number of volunteers, community members, counselors, and mayors have put their heart and soul into this community. We cannot stand here and tear any of that down. We went around for the decisions of the times, or do we understand, nor do we understand what they were faced with. But what we can do is take what they built and build it higher, stronger, and more sustainable for the next future. So I stand before you, and I can confidently and proudly state I have what it takes to represent you, to lead council, and promote our town in a positive, proactive, community-building capacity. And just before I close, I'd like to wish everyone and their families a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, faster. May you all share an attitude of gratitude. So when you vote on October 16th and the 21st, vote Heather Klein for mayor. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. It's great to see so many people out. I wish all the good fortune to our, our, all our council candidates here. They are all brought very good points forward. And also, good luck to my fellow mayoral candidates. I've lived in this community for 35 years. I've seen much of change in that period of time. I believe there's a two critical step to move our town forward on a path of further success. Two steps of investing in, the two steps are investing in families through community enhancement and to ensure that the municipal government lives within its own means and works hard to bring more supportive, supportive businesses to our community. In the last three years, I've helped lead the charge in the community and we've had a number of successes. One of the successes, of course, is the strong residential growth. With that strong residential growth, we have greater numbers of population and a younger average age in our population. So therefore, that means also changes. We've had successes of strong, of, of, uh, we had the success of getting the high school. The high school is an important item for council over the years, and that's a, that was a great achievement. Now we have children that can go from kindergarten to grade 12. An additional success is in the increase in services. In, well, three years ago, we didn't have the cell tower, we didn't have the outside mailboxes, we didn't have the enhanced 911. We now have a better equipped fire department. We have two full-time peace officers. These all increase the quality of life and safety in our community. And of course, the success of our commercial and industrial growth, everybody, which is, everybody has talked about, that is not only bringing jobs and tax relief to the homeowners, but also bringing the much needed retail to our town. With the grocery store, the pharmacy, and the opportunity for people to come and set up businesses to support our town growth. One of the emerging successes, of course, is bringing families together. We've done more and more of that in the last three years. We brought families together with the Penhold Fall Festival. We've had, we also have brought in teams, so if you want to come and watch Hockey, we've got the College Kings and, of course, the Amazons. We also have started to bring more and more people together in such an area, other events such as Community Christmas. And, of course, this event tonight, which was a good, uh, was a lasagna via uh, FCSS. 
I worked hard in building relationships with our with our citizens and through a number of events, coffee with council, uh, open budget meetings, more open business and public events where the community can come and address council. And, and I want to hear your ideas. Uh, th those ideas have to be heard by council and those ideas, suggestions, and challenges have to be answered. I've worked hard in building a relationship with builders by setting, uh, sitting down with them and establishing a relationship so we could work forward to building a better community, making sure that we have all the amenities the builders have that, that put in their, in their different neighborhoods. As your mayor, I led a group of councilors and mayor to lobby the provincial government to fund, to fund the fund that get the fund, funds to finish off the regional sewer system. And we asked and got $24 million. If that wouldn't have happened, everybody's sewer, sewer bill in Penhold would have gone up 30%. That was a saving to every homeowner in Penhold. Two critical steps of my plan, investing in families. With hard work, we'll need with, uh, needed activities to secure the green spaces, continue development of parks. We need to review how our children move about our town and make it safe as possible. Better lighting, uh, marked crosswalks, and I, as I walked around the town, I noticed there's no crosswalks on the west side of town. Why? We need to do a review of this and correct it so our children have safe paths and also drivers are vigilant of where children are, are, are moving about our town. I'll ask council to support the continuing flood mitigation plan. We need to do this to protect our family's biggest investment, their homes. Our second critical step is to ensure that the municipality lives, the municipality lives within their means. I will work hard to hold our taxes uh, as the last council just did. And oh, I, will continue, uh, I will continue working hard to hold that dollar. We have the most expensive taxes in Central Alberta. We have to take that. We have that as a disadvantage. We have to correct that. I'll bring strategies to bring more business to town. And also, I'll, I'll bring also additional strategies to work on building a, a strong team and moving our town forward. I'm asking as your mayor, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to get him. Uh, I, I'm asking to be your mayor and for your vote on the 21st of October. Thank you. Councillor, in my opinion, is to bring forth your concerns, your needs, and your wants to the table. Yes, I would only be one voice, one vote, but I would be working for you. You are the one voting for me. Therefore, whatever you need, this is what we need to hear so that we can take it to the council and discuss it and talk about it and possibly pass it or, or make a new bylaw and whatever it is you're asking of. Our job is to represent you, the people. I'm completely familiar with the mill rate situation, but I think what you're trying to um, ask is whether we would raise taxes. And as, as a councillor, if I raise taxes, I'm raising my own taxes because I live here too. I don't want that. Um, I don't think that um, any of us want that. Uh, we are in the higher tax bracket right now, and we need to um, learn to live within our means. And we need to um, find other ways to raise revenues and bring in other, other um, income. Um, I'm not exactly sure what, if what assessment increases your annual income. Whose annual income would that? The, town. the town's annual income? It's a new assessment. If our property taxes go up and it increases our income, would we increase the de or decrease the mill rate? Well, I mean, that would be a discussion too in council, right? It would be a discussion because you have to look at your budget, you have to see what, it, what uh, it's a discussion that we would have. And I believe that in a good council situation, you would also be talking to the public because public need to have input in everything that you do and um, as a counselor, as already had been answered, we need to be listening, not just our opinion, but the opinion of the uh, people we represent. Thank you. Um, I see us growing 
I see us uh, becoming a tighter community. I see our sports <coughs> activities. And uh, I see a council working as a team and everyone getting along. Um, I think that that's something that we really need. And I see more volunteers, hopefully. And uh, yeah, that's it. This is uh, one of the things that I tried to mention in my opening speech. Um, safety and road safety speed limits, uh, all of that boils down to increased presence from our peace officers. And if we can get the RCMP to come to our community, then the RCMP as well. Uh, that's one of the things that I would like to work towards. Uh, I am a peace officer for the city right here. And uh, I have that in the back of my mind in everything I do. Uh, I have children in this town that are playing in the streets and I see speeding vehicles. Um, I believe that if we increase the budget of our peace officers, um, one of the things I know they need is an administrative staff, somebody to do the work in the office for them to get them out on the road. Uh, I believe this will help the previous question. Here's not an easy one. Given all of the increasing provincial downloading of costs on municipalities, how will you keep taxes down while ensuring program progress continues? Takers? Okay, what take? Okay, perfect, thanks. I believe the minister. I believe the minister of municipal affairs has recently uh, been uh, talking about this because he's been referring to municipalities, towns, villages are overspent by 300 percent relative to the tax base. Now, if you've overspent by 300 percent. Therefore, there's excess expenditure somewhere, and it's can only solved by downsizing. You've got to cut costs. I'm telling you, somebody who lives in the trailer court, um, yeah, the town does have authority. Um, through the peace officers, they can and should be forcing people to clean up their yards. And, and you know, we need the trailer court to be a part of the <coughs> We're citizens just like everybody else. They're no different than anybody. And, and you know, but they, right now the biggest problem in the trailer court is everybody feels segregated. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they're a part of the community and we need, to, we need to do what we can to include them. And once we do that, I think you'll see that, that people start taking more pride in the trailer court and where they live. Thank you. I have a few thoughts, that's right. Our fire department is governed, or it shouldn't say governed, is run by a lot of volunteers, dedicated, hardworking volunteers. The other part to the question is what are we going to do with our outdated fire trucks? Come in. Yeah, we did, we did just buy a fire truck, is right. But one of the things we also need to do is we need to get a complete um, capital equipment replacement program in place so that we know at any year what needs to be replaced each year, so we're not sitting here trying to scramble for money every single year of the budget. So it should be just a natural attrition of equipment when they're, God forbid, 25, 30 years old, like most of ours are. Then they can be retired and we have some new equipment coming in and we know what's coming at us at, with our budget. Well, that it's truly a problem. And flooding is not only, when we start with flooding, everybody thinks, of course, the intersection of Robinson and the um, McDougal, uh, I mean Duncan. Uh, we have flooding from a number of different directions. We've already addressed it in areas such as the the new trench behind Jesse Duncan. We've, yeah. we've covered that ditch. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. The other thing we have to do is we have to address the water flo flowing in from Highway 2A. Highway 2A on the south end flows in and it helps flow in and start starts to go through the land property, down the back alleys, and then back into that intersection. There's a $25,000 fix to turn the slope of that ditch the other way. We have to push the 
Department of Transportation to, to fix that. One other part of flooding that we have to address, both on this side of town and especially around uh, uh, the older portion of town that was built in the 79 and 80s, is the back alleys. Our back alleys are atrocious. As we drive through town, especially uh, you know the ones uh, around Dundee, uh, I, I feel sorry for some of the people who try to get their vehicles out of their garages. We have to address it, put a plan forward, and over a couple of years address it so that we have proper drainage. We have, we have a very wet area, and we have a town that's as flat as a plate, and so we have to be able to move that water effectively away from your homes so it can be your homes can be protected because that's number one, your biggest investment.